salvation. The Lord is my trust and we hope in you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. That was a wonderful song about waiting on the Lord. He is our light and our salvation. Whom should we be afraid of? If the Lord is for us, who can be against us? That's a wonderful confession you can make. If the Lord is on my side, whom should I fear? Who is going to be against me? The Lord is with me. Yeah, that's very powerful. Yeah, the Lord is with us. And praise God that we can have that assurance every day in our lives. You know, from the time that we wake up um, to the time that we go to bed, we can have an assurance that God is never going to leave us nor forsake us. Mm. You know, these are powerful words to speak, you know, every day, you know, from the time we wake up by saying, Lord, you are my strength, you are my song, you are my light, you're my Amen. salvation. I mean, those kind of words can really lift you up. You know, when, you're, when, when you feel like you're afraid and all those feelings mm. of fear start to come on you, you can actually yeah. begin to say words like this and you're going to see yourself starting to get hope in your life and right. lift it up. And we've been talking a lot about faith-filled words. 
And when you start speaking faith-filled words, such as even the ones that we were singing just now, the Lord is my light and He is my salvation. Yes. You're declaring who your God is and how big He is. Mm. And with, with that, He's going to enable you to overcome any situation that you face. Mm. And the key that we've been um, discussing about is keeping your words consistent. Yeah. Keeping your faith-filled words consistent. What do I mean by faith-filled words? You're speaking only what God has told you to speak. You're speaking the Word of God, the promises of God, and anything that God has told you, you're declaring it. And so we've been talking from Mark 11:23 about how Jesus said to have the faith of God and how you can use your faith to move mountains mm. or problems, hindrances in the way. When you consistently keep speaking the Word of God, you can have powerful results. Yeah, that should actually bring you a lot of joy thinking that, um, that you can have the same God kind of faith. Yeah. Because uh, God said in His Word, you can have the faith that He uses. And we saw how we can use that faith to speak to mountains, and which is talking about like hindrances in your way, and you can command them to be removed and cast into the sea. Right. And uh, in fact, the song that we were singing, it, the, the, the lyrics we see are found in the book of Psalm, chapter 27. And mm -hmm. maybe we should just look at that scripture. It's really powerful. Yes. Uh, let's go to the book of Psalm 27. This is written by David. And last week we were talking about, we were actually discussing the story of David and Goliath and how David fought the giant just by, you know, he knew who his God was. And he, he, he knew the power of faith-filled words. And that, that's the same kind of faith that we can have. Let's read these specific words uh, from this song. It's in Psalm 27 verse 1. Let's read from there. It starts by saying, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Mm. The Lord is the strength of my life. Amen. Of whom shall I be afraid? I mean, that is so powerful. And we can go down to verse 14. The next part says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He will strengthen your heart. Wait, right. I say, on the Lord. I mean, yeah. that is amazing. When you think of light, and you think of, uh, you think of something that dispels darkness. Yes. That's what light does. It dispels darkness. And mm. David is referring to the Lord as his light. You know, David faced many enemies throughout his life. Even after he became a king, he faced a lot of challenges and things. But David, one thing we see consistently in the Psalms is that he consistently proclaimed who God was to him. Yeah. Like here he's proclaiming, you know, God is my light and God is my strength. Why should I be afraid of anything? Amen. I mean, he knew how powerful his God was. Yeah. That's the same thing you can say. You know, if you are having something difficult, a challenging situation in your life, if you know who God is, you can begin to say right now out of your mouth. These are faithful words. Yeah. Lord is my light and He is my salvation. Mm. In other words, salvation means um, God deliverer. is my victory. Mm. He's my deliverer. He's my help. I mean, you can start to say those things and then say, who am I going to be afraid of? Yeah. I've got a big God in me. I don't have to fear anything. Yeah, when you're conscious of who God is, I mean, the God who created this entire world, mm. He has chosen to come and live on the inside of you. When you receive Jesus yes. as your Lord and Savior, He chooses to come and live on the inside mm. of you. So this big God, He's right next to you. He's within you. He mm. walks with you. He talks to you. Yeah. And when you magnify the greatness of your God, you're going to be able to overcome any situation. And like even David, we spoke about his life when he was a little boy, how he was faced with a challenging situation. Mm. In 1 Samuel 17, it talks about the story of the <coughs> giant Goliath. And he was from the army of the Philistines and they were defying or coming up against the armies of the living God, the people of God at this time. Yeah. And David walks into the seen at this time with his uh, brothers and the men of Israel, they're there and they're discussing about this giant and how great he is, how, how he's cursing us with his words and what are we going to do? We're all so afraid. And, but David, he comes and he says, you know, I love what you can learn from this story about the way David's consistent words of faith enable him to mm. overcome the giant. And um, He was consistent all the time. That's right. You know, when, when, the, when the, his brother came, and told him, who do you think you are? You know, trying to come, you're just a shepherd boy. And when, he, when King Saul told him, you're just, a, you're just a boy. And he has, you never had battle experience. And then thirdly, the giant comes and curses him. He kept his confession of faith. Consistent. He did. Yeah. yeah. So there are a couple of things that we can learn from David. 
and number one was he kept speaking the word of God. Yeah. We see the first time in verse 26 how he comes to the men of Israel and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine or who is this Philistine giant mm. who has no covenant with God? Yes. We are the armies of the living God. Yeah. And we're going to talk more about the story of David and we're going to see how you can apply the principles of faith in that story into your life. We've been talking about faith-filled words and the power of speaking God's word and how you can believe the words that you speak will come to pass. So we were talking about David, the life of David, and the story can be found in 1 Samuel 17. And in this um, story, David, he is faced with a challenging situation with the giant Goliath. And so we were talking about how his words of faith, his consistent words of faith, enabled him to overcome this giant. Mm. We see in 1 Samuel 17, 26, David talks to the men that were standing by him, and he says, what shall be done to, this, to the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Or who is this giant, this Philistine, who has no covenant with God? That he should defy or come against, stand against the armies of the living God. Right? Now David knew something. He knew that he had a covenant with his God. Mm. And a covenant means he was in right relationship with God and he uh, was able to overcome this giant. Yeah. And in, in a covenant, you see those days, what it meant was the greater had, uh, the greater and the smaller, the greater used to um, enable the smaller to overcome in battles. Now, in this case, God was the greater one. And David was kind of like the weaker one. But David knew with God on his side, he can do all things. Yeah. And he knew that he had a covenant with his God. Yeah. So he tells these people, we have a covenant with God. We don't need to be afraid of this giant who doesn't have a covenant with God. Mm. And then the second time we see in verse 32, how David comes to Saul, King Saul. And he says, let no man's heart fail because of this Philistine. For your mm. servant will go out and fight with him. David said, let not your heart fail. That's you know, right. in this situation, the people's hearts were failing. And they were growing weaker in their heart because they were afraid of the words of the giant. And he was constantly defying them, speaking curse-filled words against them. And they were afraid. Yeah. But David says, hey, don't let your heart be failing because I will go out and fight with him. Because that's what fear tends to do. You know, fear tends to... Um, you know, cause us to, to think failure and see defeat and always see that nothing is going to work out. Hmm. Because that's what these people were seeing. They were seeing defeat. They, was, they were looking, actually, they were looking at the, the, the size of the giant. Hmm. They were looking at his outward appearance. In fact, hmm. they, what they should have been doing was, they should have been like David, knowing who they are. They are the armies of the living God. Yeah. Then they would have taken their focus off of this giant. Mm. onto the greatness of their God. Yeah. But they didn't. Mm. And see, if you focus on fear, fear is always going to make you see the greatness of your problem, the greatness of your mountain. Mm. And instead of speaking to the mountain like faith should do, like you should do when you use your faith, you will start magnifying the mountain. Yeah. And that's why the mountain becomes so big in your life and the problem seems so big because you're talking more about it all the time. Yeah, it's in your forefront. Mm. That's what you're concerned about. And uh, what we can see about David is the power of focus. I mean, where did he focus his attention on? See, all this time, David as a shepherd boy, he was probably, you know, writing these psalms and singing songs to the Lord. And, you know, uh, you know people didn't know him. He was not noticed. He, he was not a person who was a people pleaser. I mean, he didn't even go to the battlefield just to show his, well, I, I can do it in my own strength. I'm a great person or anything. He didn't go like that. He mm. magnified entirely the greatness of his God. That's right. He knew who his God was. Mm. And yes. that's why he didn't focus on the giant. He knew that God was the one who gave them victory even mm. in the past. Yeah. All the battles that the children of Israel, God's people had faced before, yeah. God was the one who gave them victory. Yeah. And we find, you know, the way David wins this battle with a sling mm. and with five smooth stones. Yeah. That's all. Because he knew I'm just going to trust in God, I'm going to believe God and God is going to enable me to sling that giant down. Mm. In the past also with the people of God, God enabled them to win so many battles, you know. 
with um, with Moses as the leader, with Joshua, with Caleb, so many people in the past, God was the one who gave his people the victory. And so we find even with King Saul, David comes and rehearses the victories that his God gave him with the lion and the bear. And you can read that in um, 1 Samuel 17, 34 and 37. He rehearsed the past victories of how the Lord gave him victory. Mm. And uh, you were talking also about the scripture in Psalm 103. Yeah. How it, David says, bless the Lord, O my soul, yeah. and all that is within me. Bless his holy yeah, name. Yeah, there are two ways actually from this story you can learn to walk by faith. And from David's life, we see how, um, number one, he knew the greatness of his God. And so that's what you can do. You, can, you may say, how do I walk by faith? I have no idea. Well, first of all, find scriptures that talk about the greatness of your God and yeah. magnify that, right? I've written some scriptures here that we can just read and refer to rather. Um, you know, there's one scripture in um, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 that says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you start magnifying the greatness of your God. You can say, Father, now I know that this mountain may look like a big mountain in the way, but I know you're bigger than this mountain. That's right. And so I'm going to proclaim, according to 1 John 5, 4, Greater is he, greater are you inside of me than he that is in the world. So I don't have to be afraid of this. And then another way is believe and start speaking victory even before you've seen victory. That's another way to walk by faith. So first you learn to magnify God. That's walking by faith. I mean, faith mm -hmm. is not yourself. It's magnifying who God is, nothing to do with you. And then you have to start believing and speaking victory even if you've never seen a victory in your life. That's right. David had, he, I mean, he didn't see any victory, the giant, for him to proclaim all those faithful words. Mm -hmm. But he already saw it within himself. And if you start seeing faith inside of you, start seeing victory on the inside of you, yeah. you can be, expect it's going to happen in, mm -hmm. in the natural. Yeah, and, and yeah, David had all the more reason to give up mm -hmm. because there was so much of discouragement yeah. around him. People were putting him down and saying, you're just a child, you can't do this. Yeah. Even King Saul told him that. Mm. How are you going to do this? He had all the more reason to give up and quit. Yeah. But he didn't. And we see even when he went into the battlefield with the giant mm. in verse 42, the giant, he comes and he looks about him and he kind of uh, despises him. Yeah. He looks at him in a very small way. I mean, naturally, you're this big, tall guy and you're looking at a small kid and mm. you think, who are you? Yeah. So that's the way the giant looked at him. And sometimes your problems or your mountains may look at you like that. Who are you? I'm just going to be there in your life. I'm going I'm, I'm to overpower you. Maybe the sickness that you're mm. facing, maybe the troubles in your home or in your uh, workplace that you're facing will look at you and just stare at you in the face and say, I'm not going to leave. Mm. We talked about how the mountains try to intimidate us mm. and try to overpower us. Yeah. But you need to declare to that mountain who, how big your God is, mm. that you have a big God. Yeah. So in, in verse the 43, 1 Samuel 17, 43, this Philistine, he curses him and he says, Am I a dog that you come to me with staves? And he cursed him. And verse 44, he says, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the fowls of the air. This is all the more reason to fear. David is in the middle of the battlefield with this tall giant, probably about nine feet tall. Mm -hmm. And he's hearing all these cursed filled words. And then verse 44, he talks about all that. And then we come down to verse 45 where David speaks. And David says to the Philistine, you come to me. Now listen to these words, so bold and confident David is speaking. You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hand and I will smite you and take your head from you. And I will give the carcass of the host, the Philistines of this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. Mm. You need to know that you have a powerful God with you. You yeah. need to declare the greatness and mm. the bigness of your God. And so verse 47, he continues, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's and He will give you into our hands. Wow, what confident, bold, powerful words. Yeah. 
David magnified the greatness of his God. Indeed. You know, that's another amazing verse for us that we can use uh, from the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Hmm. We're talking about how you need to believe and speak that you won the victory before you see the natural. That's and here's right. a good verse that you can rely upon and, and uh, realize that you can speak victory even if you've never seen victory in the natural. But you can believe it inside of you and start seeing it. And sure enough, it will happen in the natural. Yeah. It says here in 1 John 5, 4, But whoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Mm -hmm. and that's what we're talking about, how faith is the victory that overcomes the world. I mean, when you start speaking words of faith and start seeing, seeing yourself victorious and seeing the greatness of your God, you are actually going to start overcoming many things that for a long time have been holding you back. That's right. It could be that you're faced with a situation of lack or want in your life. How do you speak to that situation? How do you speak to that problem and command it to be removed? Mm. You take promises from the Bible. For example, Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply and meet all of my needs according to His riches in glory by Christ. And you keep declaring that. And Psalm 23 also says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm. Keep, uh, keep your words of faith consistent. Yeah. And then believe what you speak. Don't doubt, don't waver. Keep your words consistent. That's right. And as you speak words of faith, you can expect to see victory in your life because yes. God is a God who brings victory. So That's be encouraged right. today that you don't have to live defeated all your life. You serve a God who is a victorious God and He wants to give victory in every area of your life.